Okay, it's week five of the Big Ten for us, so uh, we're uh, in the grind. What do you guys got? Are you allowed to say this, talk about Wisconsin before Wednesday night? No. The match? No. Nope. We're focused on Northwestern right now, so uh, they're good. And uh, we went five there last year, so they definitely have our attention. They probably have player right now. If we've had voted Big Ten Player of the Year. She'd probably get it. They're outside hitter. So uh, we got our hands full right now without worrying about what's happening this weekend. How do you make sure that the focus is on Wednesday and aren't looking ahead? Uh, just what I just I talked to our team yesterday about uh, Northwestern, and this is a you know it's a tough place to play. We, we they they're done very well. Um, I think the two surprise teams right now are Northwestern and Indiana in the Big Ten, and because you know Northwestern took you know they're one of their, their best players at Wisconsin now, and they their other best players at UCLA. So I mean he's done a great job of. Re reloading that team. So that's our focus. We can't, uh, we're not getting caught up in anything else. I mean, that's how we roll. So how far are those midweek Um, they're, they're, It's no different for us. We're used to playing. Mean, I think we played almost on every night of the week now, except for Monday. So, so for us, it's no big deal. But the problem is, is how do you train hard? All week, but you got a match on Wednesday and a match on Saturday, so it's you got to have recovery in there. You've got to try to train hard. You can't overtrain them, so that's the balance. When you play Friday, Saturday, you have a couple days in the beginning of the week that you can go hard, just like football does. They go hard, you know, today and tomorrow, and then they start backing off. We kind of do the same thing, but when you play Wednesday, Saturday, it's different, different game. Do you prefer Wednesday, Saturday, or two matches on Wednesday? Uh, I like Wednesday, Saturday because you, for the reason that you can prepare, really prepare for each team you're playing. For, for training purposes, I like playing Friday, Saturday. But, you know, it's tough when you're on the road playing back to back on the road on a Friday, Saturday. That's where it gets really tough. Hey, John, with as much youth as you've had, as you have in your, in your lineup, what, what have you seen as the biggest challenges to adjusting to the grind of the Big Ten versus what you face, challenging teams, but a different kind of pace in the non-conference? Well, I think the non-conference is kind of like the honeymoon phase. You know, it's fun, it's exciting. You're playing all these different teams. Now, now it's, that's what I said in the very beginning, we're in the grind. So it's week five and it's, you know, every match is a really tough match. There's rivalries, there's emotions, there's, you know, players that have been playing against each other. So there's, there's just a lot of more dynamics in the Big Ten, and uh, as you can see, there's a lot of upsets. I don't know if they're upsets, it's, you know, but there's just on any given night, anybody can win, and so you've got to have the mindset of playing well. And you know, and I don't, you know, I challenged our team yesterday. You know, we've we've got to go, go on the road and try to play a really solid match. We haven't really done that yet. We played great, some really good volleyball and we got some wins, but we ha I don't think we played a really solid match. We've been high air in some places. We've had games we got blown out. So it's uh, that's our challenge. Is can we go be have a really solid effort on the road? So that's our their challenge for this Wednesday. How much value is there in winning when you don't play well, like you've seen sometimes? Well, you have to win ugly because you're, you're not going to play great every night. But, you know, when we're at home and you know, the crowd's into it, it's a little easier. We've got to find a way on the road uh, to keep our focus and our consistency and play a good, solid match, you know, for two and a half, three hours, whatever it takes. How do you work with the freshmen? I mean, other teams are getting tape on them. They know kind of what the tendencies are. How do you work with the freshmen to stay sharp and kind of evolve their games at this point of the year? It's like we do with everybody else. I mean, it's just we, we have our plan or how we train and trying to get better every week. That's that's the real big challenge. And uh, I think the older players understand that better than the younger players. The, 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 or the newer players are going to, you know, I think they kind of take – Oh, deep breath. We just, you know, we just want to match. So take a deep breath. Where, hey, four days later, we're going against another team. So that's the challenge for those guys understanding. Uh, you know, every every night, 
and every match is is a really big match, and you've got to be ready to perform. So it's a mindset. John, this focus on Northwestern before what happens this week, and it starts with you and your staff. How do you handle that, knowing that there's additional uh, media interest in the game, ticket sales? You know, I'm sure you've heard about that. How how do you keep yourself insulated so your message gets uh, trickled down to your players? Uh, you just watch video from last year against Northwestern. <laughs> watch they just they. They should have beaten Minnesota at Minnesota, and so that's that's where our focus is. We have no problem staying focused on on Wednesday. I'm sure your players are kind of are uh, insulated a little bit from it, but I'm guessing you hear this week from a lot of people about this weekend's match. Um, what do you hear from them, whether it's fans or other coaches, and, and what do you? What's your response to them about their enthusiasm and interest? Well, it's great for you know, it's great for volleyball. It's you know, but. We're used to playing these matches, so if this is where you want to be. You want to be playing in these type of matches. So for us, it's it's uh, business as usual. So I, I don't I don't really feel like it's any different, and uh, um, so it's like I said, it's business as usual. You're a football guy, and so you know, Ohio State has Michigan. And Oklahoma used to have Nebraska, Nebraska, Oklahoma. And even though you play a game right before you would play the big game, that, that other game's always looming in the background. Like, what lesson can we learn from this game that translates to the big one? Does Wisconsin have that kind of presence in your program? Like, do you think about what about this match is going to translate to that one? No. No. I'm just thinking how we're going to get better today. <laughs> so. Uh, how, how can I design to practice, challenge these guys? What do we need to work on? That's that's our focus is getting better. Are there things that you can extrapolate from every match that translate to that, given, given where they are and the kind of program they are? Well, we talk about, you know, we have what we call national championship drills that we do in practice. This is what we're going to have to do. We're going to have to perform at this level to win a national championship. Well, there's we're playing teams that you have to go through to get there. So that's how we, we don't phrase it on this or that. It's uh, it's that we call them national championship drills. What does that look like? Well, you have to come to practice, and and there's there's certain drills that we do, and, uh, and that's what we tell them. And this is you got to win this drill. To, that's the level we have to be at. Northwestern is nine and nine, but you're just saying like they've done a great job of rebuilding and there's things about this team that it feels like if it had just gone a little bit differently, they'd be very, their record would be very different. They took Minnesota to five sets. They beat Purdue earlier this month. I know you mentioned a key player, but what specifically as a whole of this Northwestern team do you need to be aware of getting ready for this midweek matchup with them? Um, well, he, he's he's a really good coach. They, they have a really good system they run. You can tell they're very well trained and uh, and that's what's a sign of a good program when you can just get some new players in there and then, you know, they're going like this, you know, this season. So may have been a little rough starting out, but you know, they got it going. They got a great setter. So, uh, you know, he, he's a good coach. I mean, he's won two national championships, coaching men at Loyola, who's done that. So much respect for them. And, and uh, you know, they're a very good team. And they've got a player that uh, teams have had a really hard time stopping. Hey, John, I know you've talked after each one of your road matches in the Big Ten about the environments that you've played in, and you've gone into a lot of gyms that have set records for attendance and been intimidating. Um, but overall, what can you say about the volleyball environment that you guys are seeing outside of the Devaney Center as you go through the league this year? Yeah, it's it's been mind blowing because you know I, I attribute it to the stadium match here. I just think there's just been uh, an interest one in Nebraska. You know, we're, we kind of we did this thing. There's po a lot of popularity. I think people want to come and see us. Two, I think, you know, they're having big crowds everywhere, and I think there's just, it's just created this interest. I just, you know, read the WNBA had their record crowd last night. So women's sports is on fire right now, and I think the stadium match had a lot to do with it. And then now you're you're seeing that spill over to. Uh, you know, a lot of volleyball matches, and that's why everybody's breaking records. I mean, you know, whoever, you know, if I'd have told you we're going to play in front of 9,000 at Michigan, are you kidding me? I mean, they, they, they usually play in this natatorium. It's an old swimming pool that they converted. It's an old cracker box gym that 
you know, sometimes they'd fill it, most of the time they wouldn't. And you know, here they are playing in front of 9,000. So that was pretty, pretty impressive. Same with Michigan State. They, Michigan State tended to draw better, but Ohio State's been sold out. You know, every, Indiana sold out now several times. So it's, volleyball's on fire right now. And I think a lot of it's from the exposure from the stadium match. And, and then, of course, women, uh, Iowa women's basketball just, you know, so, I don't know if they sold out that stadium or 55,000. Yeah, I mean, who would ever thought that? So it's uh, <clears throat> women's sports is really on the upswing right now. John, in addition to uh, Bergen's setting, she's at least at like two and a half digs per set. How, how have you seen her game develop? And does she maybe not get the credit that she maybe deserves defensively for what she's bringing to your team? You're, you're, it's a great call. She's done a really good job uh, developing her block and her defense. And uh, all you have to do is look at all the number of sets that Lexi has every match. Well, those are coming off. Most of them are coming off Bergen's digs. So she's doing a really good job. Uh, usually with setters, I always get frustrated because they don't play defense. But, you know, Nicklin was probably the greatest defensive setter we've ever had. And I think Bergen has taken a lot of pride in that. So she's doing a nice job.